Bob Ross method is actually uh, a method called uh, a la prima and it's a wet on wet painting technique and it's pretty much only done with oil paints. I might um, in a later date try it with acrylics uh, but from what I can tell it doesn't really work with acrylics simply because they dry too fast. So today uh, I'm gonna try and show you a painting that I've done, one of my more popular paintings that I've done, try and recreate it here for you. And let's first talk about some of the things that you're gonna need. The first thing that you'll need is, of course, a canvas. And I have primed my canvas with just black acrylic paint, flat black acrylic paint, because I want a nice dark canvas. Uh, the next thing that you will need is brushes. Now this is the two inch brush that's used for coating the canvas. They are natural uh, bristles, hog's hair bristle, bristles. So this is the two inch, this is the one inch. Um, I also have a couple of fan brushes, two different size fan brushes. The script liner, which Seen some better days, it's a little out of shape. We'll see how, how well it does today if I use it. And this is one of my favorites. It's the half inch round brush. Um, yeah, so um, as I'm going through things, if anybody has a question, go ahead and make a comment and I'll answer your question for you if I can. Um, and we'll get this done. So, oh. Also, the other thing you need, odorless paint thinner. Odorless paint thinner. Um, you've got to have this as a solvent um, to clean brushes and get them ready for, uh, for work. Now, I have over here um, a jar with my paint thinner already in it. Um, this is what I will be using. There's a little screen in the bottom of that. That's what I use to scrub my brushes and get them clean. Um, I also have down here, you can't see it, but down down there, uh, I have a trash can set up with a little board in it for beating my brushes against, you know, like Bob Ross always said, beat the devil out of them. Um, I have a trash can down there to beat the brushes to get them good and dry. So the first thing that we need to do when we're painting, a la prima, is you have to make the canvas wet. You gotta get it wet and good and slick. So today, Normally on a white canvas, you would use something called liquid white. Uh, but I have liquid clear here. It's called liquid first coat. You can get this at Hobby Lobby or Michael's, anywhere like that. Let me go ahead and open it up. Grab my screwdriver from over here. I'm gonna open my can up because this is the first time that I've used this particular can. I'm not promising to do this in a half an hour like Bob Ross does because, uh, well, it takes me a whole lot longer. Um, plus, I want to show you everything. He always started with his canvases ready to go. He had everything already spread on it. He had the, the, uh, the liquid white already on it when, when he started his shows, so he just dove right in. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my two inch brush, two inch brush, and I'm just gonna get some liquid clear on it here. And you don't need a lot of this. Right? And what you do is you start, and you just start kind of mushing it into the canvas, as he would say, you scrub it in, just scrub it in. I like, I kind of like you know, mushing it into the canvas. But you wanna make sure that you get a good, firm coverage. And this liquid clear is a little glossy, so you can, you can see pretty easily where it's covering the canvas. Let me get a little bit more. Just kind of scrub it in here. The whole thing covered. Okay, now 
this is pretty much just uh, this liquid clear is basically just a um, an oil base uh, paint. It's got no pigment in it, so it doesn't have any color to it at all. Scrub it in there. It does have kind of an odor. Now, you might be wondering, why did I paint the canvas black? Um, I think these black canvases, because they already have sort of this dark undercoat to them, they make for really, really striking paintings. And that's kind of held up because um, I've, sold, I've sold two paintings since I started. And both of them were like the one that I'm going to do here. So. People, people like them. Alright, so. Got my, my coat of liquid clear on there. Now the other ones I didn't use liquid clear. Uh, so it kind of made this process a little bit more difficult especially when dealing with the, the water that I'm going to show you how to do. Um, so this is actually my first time trying with the liquid clear, and I'm hoping it's going to work a whole lot better and make things go a whole lot smoother. Put this back here because I'm done with that now. And then I'm going to clean off my brush. Thinner, scrub it a little bit on that screen, and then I found that if you don't do this, if you don't like really rinse it off and let that thinner drip back in there, instead just shake it off like Bob Ross does, you go through a lot of thinner. And paint thinner will last pretty much forever if you don't shake it all off into the trash can. So I'm going to get as much of it off of there as possible. And then I'll go down to my trash can and I'll beat the devil out of it, as Bob Ross would say. Shake it, shake it, shake it. And the reason you beat it off like that and shake it out is you want to have a good dry brush. Um, because if you put paint thinner on the canvas, it will really, really mess up what you're doing and make the paint smear and run and just get awful to work with. All right, so I think I'm done with my two inch brush for a few minutes. I'm gonna get my, my palette out here. Now my palette is, uh, it's, it's pretty big. It's not nearly as big as um, Bob's was. But, and I also don't have a whole bunch of paint put out on it right now because oil paint is pretty pricey and um, he just like puts out big globs and it's it's pretty clear that he goes through a lot of or he went through a lot of paint and I don't have that kind of money to waste on paint so I use a little bit as I go um, but for for this painting I know that I'm going to use uh, phthalo blue phthalo blue here's my phthalo blue and of course this is the Bob Ross branded paint I, I did order a kit um, and the standard colors came in with it, and phthalo blue is one of the colors that you'll use most often. So I've got some phthalo blue. Just gonna dab it out there. And where's my other one that I need? It's just alizarin crimson. Right there, alizarin crimson. That's the other one. This is just going to start, I'm just going to start with the sky here, so. Ah. Things got a little tight there on me. Now I'm sure that my voice is not nearly as calming and soothing as Bob's was. But we do our best. We do our best. 
and I'm not trying to be like him either. Um, just in the way that I paint. Not necessarily in his way either. So I'm put the lid back on my paints. I'll probably need more of them, more of those colors before I'm done. But as of right now, I'm put the lid back on. Okay. Now, now I'm going to take my one-inch brush and. Uh, I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to start with a little bit of blue, I think. We'll get a, we'll pull out a touch of blue, get it on the brush here, just a little touch of that phthalo blue. And then I'm going to put in sort of a, a sunrise. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this area right here blue. Let me just kind of turn on like this. Now, the thing is, with this liquid clear, um, you can't really see the blue yet, but I'm just going to put like a long stripe right along here. Like, about like that. And I'm going to get a little bit more. And I'm going to do the same thing down here on this side. I know there's going to be water down here. I want to have a good reflection. Just a little bit of phthalo blue. Now I'm not even going to clean my brush off because I know that I want this to be, turn into like a purple, uh, like a lavender color. So I'm going to get a little bit of the blizzard crimson. My brush. And can kind of see a little bit where I put my blue and I know I'm going to go underneath of that with the crimson. Just kind of straight down here. Just going to mix a little bit more and I'm going to go on top of my blue with that a little bit too. So we had a nice sunset. Then, of course, I have to do the same thing down here. Ooh, I kind of lost where I put my blue down here, so I'll just uh, put it there. If it mixes, that's fine, because I want that nice lavender purpley color. A little bit there. Okay. So I'm going to clean my brush off again, dip it into the paint thinner, scrub it on that screen. This doesn't happen nearly as fast as Bob Ross made it seem like it was happening, so clean it off, try and preserve as much of that paint thinner as possible. Thinner back in the jar. There we go. And now I'll shake it in my trash can. And then beat the devil out. Okay. Now, wipe it off with a paper towel. That's what I'm doing here. I'm wiping it off with a paper towel. Set it down. Now my next thing that I want to do is I need some titanium white. Titanium white. This is where that magical moment comes in. Uh, with this titanium white, just put a little bit here in the palette. I'm going to grab that one inch brush again mm -hmm. and uh, then I'm going to kind of go over, oh, I see here on the camera, you can kind of see the, the crimson and the blue there. Um, but I'm just going to get a little bit of that titanium white, and this is going to brighten up those colors. And they're really going to pop. And I'm just going to kind of go right here. And 
since it is going to be sort of a night scene, I want, I want that to sort of fade out, blend out as I go. Right now it feels a little dark, a little darker than I wanted it. Now I'm going to go down here. For my tastes, that's not dark enough. I'm gonna go back up here and hit some of this with a little bit more color. Some more blue in here. Darken that a little bit because I want that I want like a nice sunset blue. And with all of that. Okay. Now I'm going to take my two inch brush and I'm just going to kind of blend this. Little X's. Just kind of blend it. Take out those brush strokes. looks good. Um, what? I do not need the beard. I need the hair. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I could go put on one of my wigs, I guess. <laughs> um, okay, now it's time to do mountains. I love doing mountains. They're fun. Uh, I need one more thing before I do the mountains. I need some black. Now this black, I got this black, it's kind of cheap black. Um, it's not it's not the best for doing mountains, so I'm actually not gonna use this. I'm gonna go back to the Bob Ross black, the midnight black, because it's thicker. And what I've discovered is you do want thicker paints uh, on your base coats, on your bottom coats. Now, I realized that, you know, this is all, all going to be very, very dark anyway. It's going to be very difficult to see it. But later coats, the top coats, you want um, you want to be thinner so that they will stick. Uh, his rule of thumb was a thin paint sticks to a thick paint. So you want your base coats to be thicker. And the Bob Ross paints are formulated to be thicker paints. Uh, however, I have found that the Masters Touch brand uh, that I get at the Hobby Lobby are pretty close to the same consistency as the Bob Ross paints. Now this, um, I think I got at Michael's, this is Artist's Loft. It's a whole lot thinner and it doesn't work nearly as well. Um, so just in case you're thinking about doing this. Um, all right, now it's time to mix some colors. So I'm gonna take some black and some of the phthalo blue, mix that together. Some of the lizard crimson, mix that together. Mix it all together. You want a nice dark color. I 
think the reason I like doing the mountains so much is I really like using the knife. I think that was one of the things that always drew me to Bob Ross was how he used the knife and how easy and smooth he made it seem. Okay, I got a really nice lavender color and I'm gonna add a little bit more black to that. I don't know if you can see, see that color up there, but it's a nice dark lavender color. And then you pull it out nice and thin and you cut across it and get a nice roll of paint on the end of your knife. And then you decide where you're gonna put your mountains. This is the fun part. So I know I want a big mountain here. don't want your mountains to just simply be triangles because those are those get boring uh, triangles get really boring um, what I want is I want kind of a range and I want it to come down and get kind of lower over here um, so I'm gonna kind of swoop down here like this with the knife and then you can make them the better and then you do you kind of scrape the paint in like this after you've got your outline is really what you're worried about here with this just with the outline I'm gonna put in some foothills down there down for a minute, clean my knife off, knife off with a paper towel, and these are just chintzy, uh, ch the cheap paper towels um, that I got from like the dollar store or something like that, uh, good ones are not that great for doing this, I mean, they work, but, all right, now, it's time to get my two-inch brush, okay, now this is uh, where it gets a little little tricky. You want to grab your paint like right near the top, and then pull it like this. Pull it down. Mm -hmm. You got to be really careful. And then just kind of blend it down like this. Grab it and pull it. And this is really kind of hard to see exactly what this is doing on this black canvas. Um, I can see it. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but on a white canvas, it becomes really, really clear, uh, what you're doing because it pulls that paint down and then you can kind of blend it and it fills in the, the mountain. And you can kind of lay out what you want here your mountain to look like there, okay? Since it's so dark, it doesn't really matter at this point. But that's where uh, the next part's gonna be really important. I'm gonna go ahead and clean, ooh, I stand up, you can't see me. I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush off now. Um, clean. 
clean and clean as much of that thinner out as I can. Kind of shake it back in there. And like Bob always said, you do want to use odorless paint thinner. There's been some uh, discussion as to whether an odorless thinner is toxic or not. I don't know. But you should always use it in a very well ventilated space. Um, it doesn't really smell. You can't really smell smell it that bad. There is a little bit of a hint of an odor to it, but it's not it's not overpowering. Uh, it's not that bad. But anyway, let's go ahead. Brush. That is always a fun part. Uh, okay, set that up here, and then <clears throat> I'm gonna get my knife now. Now it's time to define those mountains. And you do that using titanium white, right there, titanium white. Um, so you pull the white out. I'm gonna put highlights on right now. So I'm gonna pull that out, just like I did with my mountain color. Pull it out nice and flat, cut across, and line up. cut across like that. Get a little roll of paint. And this is where a lot of people struggle because you have to have a really light touch. And if you don't, it doesn't work. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this peak right here and you just very lightly touch right on the edge of the, that mountain and pull, very lightly. You want that paint to break and have lots of little uh, open spots and dark spots. This is why that thick paint is so important. Because if it's really thin, it won't break. It's kind of like that. I'm gonna go up here. The other thing you can do is, if you're having trouble making it break, is you can just kind of tap, go down, and let, let the canvas pull off however much paint it wants as you go. Okay, so now we, it looks already like we've got some good highlights there. Now I'm going to go up to my very top peak up here, <clears throat> the big one. Kind of like how this is turning out with that liquid clear because as I get down into where I put that, that blue and crimson mixture it's starting to mix with that titanium white that I'm putting on for highlights and automatically making like uh, some some shadows in there and you'll see I'm not quite done with this yet I'm not done with these mountains this is just the highlights and I want to I want to do the highlights on these peaks first before I go in and do any kind of shadows. looks nice. Okay, 
Now for the shadow color. For the shadow color, you need, you need titanium white. And then I'm going to get a little bit of this, uh, this dark color that I had used for the, the mountain base. I'm going to mix that together. And it lightens up that color a little bit. And you want it, you want it a little bit lighter uh, than your mountain color. Let me put a little bit more blue in there. Go. It doesn't have to be super mixed, mixed up super, super well. Um, you can have a little bit of marbling and it uh, looks pretty good. Now, you're going to go in here. You know what? This big knife. I really like the big knife for making the mountain base and for doing the highlights, but I prefer my smaller knife. It's a little bit smaller uh, for doing these, uh, these shadows just because the nature of these shadows, you're generally looking at less space to work with, so then you just kind of sweep down the other way with your shadow color. It seems to be a little bit thinner paint. I'm not sure why so much thinner, but it is. Uh, and then you put them on the opposite sides of your highlights there. It's wherever you think that other side of your paint is going to be. Hopefully I don't jostle the, uh, it's a little bit awkward here. This side's definitely going to get a lot of shadow color here. It's very thick. Now you like to have these breaks in here. just add so much more depth to the mountain. And of course, <laughs> yes it does John Michael, this is, uh, this is why I'm doing this one because you have one and now uh, somebody else, two other people have very similar ones. But So I'm showing people how I painted this one. Now let's say that I, I want to change something uh, about this. This is one of the great things about this method is you can always make changes. Um, maybe you don't like the angle of one of your slopes or something like that. So I'm going to take my, my big knife. I'm going to go back up here and get a little bit more titanium white and um, let's see, where do I want some more white? I want to put, I want to make this come over here. I got no shadows in here. So I want to put a, come here. I feel like I need to do more shadows there. It feels off. Enough of mountains. I've been playing with these mountains long enough. The next thing you do is you take your two inch brush and you 
you want to tap along the bottom uh, and give your the bottoms of your mountains sort of a misty look, right? So you want to just kind of tap like this. You want to follow the contours. You tap, 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 tap. This was really hard for me to do the first couple of times because I felt like I was messing up all that hard work that I'd just done on the base of those mountains because I thought they looked so good. Sorry, my, my easel's a little wobbly here. It's not the greatest easel. But you'll see why this works here in just a second. Right? So you want to follow those. You don't want straight lines. You want Once you've done that, then just light as a feather. You just kind of lift that up. Just to get rid of the tap marks. Make it look misty. Just like this. Lift, lift, lift. Just very lightly. Lift, 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 lift. It makes it look very misty down at the base of those mountains. Now, 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 now we need some foothills. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take, I'm going to take my one inch brush. I really like the one inch brush. It works really well and you can just do a lot with it. So I'm going to take my one inch brush. I'm going to tap it into this, this dark mountain cover that I have. Tap, tap, tap. Now, kids are getting up from naps. You can probably hear uh, hear them banging around upstairs, maybe. I don't know. If you do, that's what's going on. The kids just got up from their naps. I didn't, I didn't work quite fast enough. So I'm going to tap, tap, tap into my dark color here, like so. And then I've got to decide, okay, where am I going to put my, where am I going to put my little foothills? And I'm going to start right here. Just kind of tapping downward. Put in these, these foothills. Just kind of decide where do they live. And those bristles, as they bend, they give the illusion of trees, treetops. I'm just going to kind of follow the, the contours of that dark spot there. Right? And because you've got that, that misty area, it, it sets it apart and it becomes more visible. So I'm just going to, I like kind of how I did that, how those things are there. So follow the outlines of that dark, put in my foothills. And then the, what I'm seeing here, the way I'm seeing this is, I feel like the whole thing is sort of sloping down uh, towards a lake over here. So I think I'm gonna fill all of this in over here. This is gonna be all uh, land. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep on with putting in this, this dark lavender color. You always want to work back to front. I always want to work back to front. So before I get into anything in my foreground here, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of reflection into my lake. Now to do that, I'm going to take a little bit, a little bit of white, and I'm just going to, well this is going to be lands, it's not going to be a reflection here, but I'm just going to put in just a little, little hint.
Now this is not going to look like that here. I'm going to scrape all that paint off, the excess off. I just want that hint of there's something there. I don't want a lot of paint in there because in a minute I'm going to go over that. If there's a ton of paint on it, it's going to really mess everything up. I'm going to scrape all the excess off of that. I'm going to take my two inch brush and I'm going to decide where my water line is back here in these foothills. Put my brush there and just pull straight down. Straight down. And that kind of, I think I've got a little bit of white on my brush there. It's okay. Straight down. Straight down. Straight down. Okay, so now I've got a water line back there. And now, very gently, So now it looks like a reflection of those peaks down in that water. Excess paint there on that brush. Now I have to decide what my foreground is going to look like. Mm. <clears throat> oh, let's go with uh, let's go with the fan brush. Put some trees in here. Okay. Um, there's going to be a tree living here. I'm going to take that dark color again. Because we're up in the north woods, it's going to be an evergreen tree. Evergreen tree, because they're really easy to paint. And they just live in the brush, right? They just live in the brush. So, uh, you know, let's, let's say we have one living right here. We'll paint from that. Okay, right there. more paint. Don't have quite enough there. That's just alizarin crimson, phthalo blue. Now, the last couple times I did this, the last two times I did this, I didn't have the liquid clear, and so doing the reflections in the water was really tricky uh, because the paint didn't slide um, like it does when you have the liquid clear. A lot of paint, a lot of paint on those bristles. Okay. Now we can do it. Just touch with just the corner of the brush. since our background is already really dark, you're not going to see a whole lot of this until go back and put highlights on it. Okay. Of course, he has to have a friend, right? Bob would say he's got to have a friend. So we just put sort of the tip top of the tree there. See that over there? 
And he's probably got a friend. Maybe not quite so tall. Maybe not as tall. Touch. There we go. And you push hard on those bristles. Bristles the farther down you get. Bend them a little bit more. Okay, okay. I'm gonna rinse this brush off. I'm gonna decide what do we need to do next. These fan brushes, these fan brushes you can't really beat off. You just kinda gotta scrub them. And then rinse them off. Use a paper towel. Ugh. Spraying paint thinner everywhere. So I'm gonna rinse this off because I'll need it in a minute. I'm gonna do go back and do highlights on those trees in a minute. Um, but one thing I forgot that I probably should have done to begin with um, is I'm gonna take. I've got another little a little tiny fan brush here. I'm gonna dip it in some of this white. Just a, just a very little bit of white, titanium white. And I'm gonna go up in here and in these foothills, I'm just gonna kind of touch and pull up. Touch, pull up. With just a little bit of white. Just like that. And it kind of looks like now there's, there's moonlight going through and reflecting off of tree trunks down in there. It just makes it look a little bit, a little bit brighter, a little bit deeper, a little bit fuller. just really brightens it up. It's supposed to be a dark night scene, but man, also kind of maybe gives the hint of snow laying in on those hills there. Uh, yeah, I like that. That's nice. It's very nice. Okay. Okay, okay. Now, uh, now back to highlights on my big trees. For this, I'm going to need titanium white. Just to thin that up just a touch. Because remember, thin paint sticks to thick paint. Okay. Now, I'm going to go in here. Let's see, the light's coming in from this direction. Uh, which means that this side, of the, the right-hand side of the trees are going to reflect a little bit more light. So we just put a little, little touch of highlights here on this side of the trees. But we let it fade out farther down we get. We don't, we don't want it too bright down there at the bottom. And we do the same thing over here on this tree. You just touch. You don't want your bristles to uh, to pull along. You just I really just tack it. You can't just tap randomly. You do kind of have to think about where those branches are going to be. Where do you see them? Okay. Now let's do this, this side. Same side over here. Just going to touch, touch, touch.
There's my little evergreen. Now, 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 now. We can't just have trees floating in the middle of nowhere. So, we gotta put in some land down here at the bottom for them to rest on. Alright. So, I'm gonna take my two inch, or my one inch brush again. Go back into that dark color, tap into that dark color, and I'm gonna start putting in some. You can't really see this over here because it's it's already dark, but I'm gonna bring some land in over here, some bushes. in this corner here. It's going to be really important here because we do have right. It's okay because this is going to kind of come in front of is blocked in there. Okay. Now, I've got a decision to make. I can either continue to use the one inch brush to do highlights and put some snow on these branches and bushes and that sort of thing. Or I can use my half inch round. I think, uh, I think I'm going to use the half inch round for this. So for that, I just need some more Titanium white. That's black. There's my white. Get some more white. Grab my one inch round brush. I'm just going to tap it into my titanium white. I'm going to get a little bit of paint thinner. Not much, just a little bit. Just enough to thin it out. Ooh, that was a little too much, I think. Uh, because I want it to. Whoa. No. Well, now we got white splatter. That'll be snowflakes on the lens or something. We'll see if we can fix that, right? Bob Ross says no, no such thing as mistakes, just happy accidents. That happened because I got too much paint thinner in here in my white paint. Okay. Well, we'll see if we can cover that up. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to use my half inch round and just kind of go in here put in some highlights on some of these bushes. Now you don't want to do too much because it will ruin the illusion. Those dark areas are really important. So I always said, do one bush at a time. Do one bush at a time. I think maybe I've done a little too much over here, so I'll be a little bit more judicious. I also think my brush has gotten a little bit out of shape. It doesn't look quite round anymore. Uh, which is problematic at times. So you 
you don't get the, the shape that you want. When I first started doing this with this brush, oh man, I love this brush. Because I could just get perfect little round shapes. I don't know how I feel about that. It feels like there's an awful lot of stuff down there. So we're gonna do something about that. brush. Side. Do, 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 do. Let's go. Let's go to the script liner. And do, 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 do. I'm going to get a little bit of brown. A little bit of Van Dyke brown. And I'm gonna put in some scraggly trees and stuff here. So a little bit of Van Dyke brown on my... And then I'm gonna get some of that Van Dyke brown and some of this purple color. And this time I want a lot of paint thinner. A lot of paint and a lot of paint thinner because you want this paint to really just flow like ink as Bob always said you want it to flow like ink so get some get a lot of paint make it nice and thin and then pull it out to a point and then let's see if we can cover up this uh, this mistake that I made here we're gonna go in here Take up and get some more paint. I feel like there should be more of it somewhere here. Maybe even get more. We got more sticks coming up here. And I got snow on them, so I'm just going to pick up some of that white as we go up, and that's fine. That's what I want. Thank you. 
right through. There's some birch or alders or something like that where they shed their leaves and they're just hanging out. Anyway, um, okay, let's say we're done with that for now. Um, let's go back here and push some of this back. Get some, oops, probably should have, some hairs are coming out of there. Do a one inch brush, go back into some titanium white. see there I see a little path going down to the water so we're gonna put a little path in there going down to the water maybe in the summer this is some little fisherman's path to get down there so I'm gonna take a little bit of that brown pull it out flat cross it We're just using the knife. And it's gonna come right up. Run right off canvas. bushes somewhere, but of course, of course it's winter time, so there's going to be some snow, so we'll just get a little bit of white, a little touch of that brown, we'll go back in and we'll put some, some more white lights on. Now it's all right. Now we want to push that back just a touch, just a touch, just push it back into the background. I'm sorry if I keep going off screen, I'm leaning and grabbing brushes. 
push that back just a little bit. So we'll come back in here. We'll put some little things living growing over top of the path there. Push it back into the distance. Like so. Okay. I think that about does it. I think I'm done. And it's time to sign my painting. Yeah. This is the hardest part for me. I've never been able to uh, to sign quite as nicely as Barbara Rosa. So I'm going to get some paint thinner. I'm going to go into my crimson here. He would use bright red, um, but I don't want to get out any bright red. So I'm going to use the Elizabeth Crimson. Didn't it? Um, really good. Make sure I got a lot of good paint on there. Pull it out to a nice fine point. And oh, let's see, where will we sign this? Uh, he always signs it over here. Yeah, let's do it right here. W. M. Here we go. Finished painting. Now comes the hard part. Clean up. Ugh. It's my least favorite part. You gotta make sure you clean all your brushes good and uh, get all the paint out of everything and clean off the palette because man, if it dries on the uh, on the on the palette or on your brushes, you've done screwed the pooch. Yeah, it's bad news. So there's my painting. I don't know how long that took me. Uh, I don't see a timer here, but I guess I'll I guess I'll say. Oh no, I'm not done. Ah, <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. Some very important. I'm gonna get some white. And go up here and put a couple stars. There's another way to do this. I could have done this like at the very beginning. And just like taking my brush and just like spattered it with white paint. Um, If I were really into it, I'd do like the Big Dipper, some kind of constellation up there, but I don't feel like it. All right, that's it. I'm done. I'm going to clean up and uh, go back upstairs and probably watch some Hulu or something. All right. Ciao.